Hello, everyone. What I want to do is go over homework six. The grades were uh, average so far for the course, about a C, average, median. Um, so, uh, yeah, so for the first problem, we want to find the smallest integer n for which the positive 2 at the end of each period accumulate to at least $225 if there are n deposits of at 5% followed by 15 deposits at 2%. So um, for a problem like this, I would probably draw a time diagram. I think I actually first uh, tried this before I had a chance to really review for this course, and I tried it without doing the time diagram. I think I got it wrong. Um, you know, after reviewing a little bit, I realized this was kind of silly. Um, definitely draw the time diagram to get an idea of what's going on. Uh, it's a very simple time diagram. So we have... Um, and the positive at 5%. So, uh, well, it's per period, uh, we, we don't know what periods are, we don't care. Uh, the per period interest rate is 5% for the first N periods. And then uh, for the next 15 periods, N to N plus 15, uh, it's 2%. Okay. Uh, it's just two, everything is two. Um, so I don't know if it, I'll do n plus one here. Um, I bet you really need this, but whatever. Make sure we're all on the same page here. Okay, so, um, yeah, we just break this up into two annuities. So, um, just like um, in the uh, lecture video, uh, 225, we're just going to solve for n and then round up to the nearest integer. So 225 is, let's look at, uh, let's do the last 15 uh, payments of two. So um, payment periods for the last ones here start at um, N, and the first payment is at the end of the, um, uh, this would be the N plus one period, which begins at N, just like the first period begins at zero. Okay. So we have these 15 payments. Okay. So this is very simple. It's two uh, S 15, the interest rate here is um, that uh, it's two percent, so point oh two. Okay. So now let's look at the first n periods, n payments rather. So we're going to accumulate those at t equals n. That, as I mentioned many times, is erasing is awkward here. Okay, so we look at these N payments here. That's 2SN.05. That accumulates at, um, at N here. But then it sits in the account for 15 more periods at an interest rate of 2%. So this times 1.02 to the 15. Um, and so, of course, this here is going to be two times, I just, I'll write out the whole thing here, uh, 1.05 to the N minus one over 0 0.05, 1.02 to the 15th, this is two times 1.02 to the 15 minus one over 0 0.02. So uh, very easily solve for N. You're going to get 30 
0.995. So we round up. N has to be an integer. We have N periods. So this is my answer. If you don't like this answer, well, check your answer. Check that if we plug in 30, we're going to get less than 225. If we plug in 31, we're going to have more than 225. So this is the smallest integer where we have more than 225 for the accumulated value. Okay, uh, the next one is a little tricky uh, to really precisely nail down, but uh, again, time diagram really, really helps. So we have an annuity in perpetuity. It's an annuity due. Pays X at the beginning of each year for 10 years. And starting at the 11th, beginning of the 11th year, which is T equals 10, increases by 2% each year. By an X, if the effective annual interest rate is 5%, present value is 3,000. Okay. So let's draw a time diagram. 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever. We really don't need all those, but it's fine. Um, yeah, whatever. 9, 10, uh, 11, Okay, so uh, again, it's an annuity due, and it pays X at the beginning of each year until the beginning of the 10th year, where it starts to increase. So the beginning of the 11th year starts to increase by 2%. The beginning of the 11th year is T equals 10, just like the beginning of the first year is zero, the beginning of the second year is one, et cetera, et cetera. So if, if you always forget, I, I, that's the way I like to remember. Well, okay, wait a minute. What's the beginning of the first year? T equals zero. What's the beginning of the second year? T equals one. And then I remember, oh yeah, it's always the beginning of any, of the nth year is T equals N minus one, whatever N is. Okay. So this is uh, 1.02X, can't squeeze it in, 1.02 squared X, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So we break this up into uh, two annuities. I'll draw a time diagram for these two. Um, so let's uh, take the first annuity due. Okay. That is a nine year annuity, that should be an X. So payments are at the beginning of each year and the last year in this annuity is the ninth year which is t equals eight t equals nine okay. payments are at the beginning of each year so there's no payment here um for uh x sorry there, there's uh, yeah there's no payment of x here okay so the present value is just x a double dot nine 0.05, and uh, I just plop this into my calculator. Make sure you're in annuity due mode. This gives you 7.46321x, or just go back and plug into the formula for a double dot 9.05. Um, yeah, so remember the formula here is x one minus uh one over one point oh five ninth over one minus one one over one point oh five uh let me just quickly check this one point oh five to the uh, sorry, this over here. All right, make this a minus plus one divided by 
one minus one over one point oh five parentheses. Yeah, seven point four six three two one. All right, uh, let me get rid of this because this is kind of messy. But go back. All right, so the next one. Um, yeah, we really didn't have a formula for uh, annuity immediates uh, in perpetuity where uh, payments uh, increase geometrically. Just the book doesn't have it. Um, not a big deal. Uh, sorry, annuity. We don't have a formula for annuity dues where uh, payments are in perpetuity and increase uh, geometrically, meaning it increases by percentage. Uh, here it's 2% uh, each year. Um, okay, so, right. So what do we do? Well, um, uh, uh, yeah, so we start this at t equals 8 then. So the first year is uh, the ninth year, eight to nine. It already took care of this payment here. So this starts at X. I think this makes it a little easier anyway. So this is eight, nine, 10, 11. So this is, um, yeah, 1.02 X. 1.02 squared x, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So now we use our formula. Again, we don't have a formula for this kind of annuity um, in perpetuity that is uh, that has payments at the beginning of each period. So we set it up so that the payments are at the end of each period. Uh, so this is going to be... Um, just simply x over 0 0.05, my interest rate over 0 0.02, the percentage or the decimal that um, stuff increases by each period, 2%. Well, this is at t equals 8, so we want present value. So move this over to t equals 0. So in other words, discount this uh, by 8 years at... at a um, interest rate of 5%. So this counted by eight years at interest rate of 5%. This is 22.56131 times X. All right, so the present value is 3,000. So 7.4, Three, two, one, x plus twenty two, five, six, one, three, one, x. Uh, so that. So we get x is ninety nine point nine. So if you didn't quite get this right, um, you know, I didn't take off too much, but um, yeah. all right. And these problems I love because they're very practical, um, very commonsensical. You know, you have to kind of think about what's going on here. The one thing I want to make clear, which some people didn't really carefully read this, I don't want the amount... I don't want the total accumulate value uh, per year in this table here. I'm, I want the amount deposited. Okay? Point is, when you figure out the amount deposited, you'll see that this is going to be a uh, decreasing in annuity. And you can use your decreasing annuity formula that we talked about in lecture. Okay? So... Um, yeah, so you deposit 16000 into account at the end of each year interest plus this little 400 withdrawn and put into another account. Okay. So the first account earns 3%. So let's just take, let's just fill out the first uh, um, row here. So 
16,000. Then we subtract, well, interest. I don't care what that is right now. Um, but then you subtract additional 400. So it's 15,600. 15,600. Then it's 15,000. Subtract another, subtract interest and another 400. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. 14,800. Okay, keep going. 400 and then finally zero okay. so uh t equals zero at the beginning of the first year there's no interest earned okay so uh at the end of the first year sixteen thousand earned three percent interest so we're taking that and the additional 400 we combine that with the 400. Okay, so this is going to be equal to 480 uh, plus 400. So the 15,600 earns 3% interest. So we're going to take that plus 400. So this is going to be 460 plus 400. And we keep going. Uh, this is uh, 15,200 times 0 0.03 plus 400, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the prior year would be 800. So this is 800. 0.03 and 400 I really should make this bigger so I can write this a little clearer okay well um, right so this is 400 um, oh, sorry Working backwards, this is 12 plus 400, 24 plus 400, and keep going. This is going to be, um, ah, sorry, this is, this is 12, but it's two times. Times 12. Really, I can go backwards or forwards here. Um, so this is going to be. 39 times 12. And then this is uh, 30 times 12. Uh, sorry, 40 times 12. Okay. So this is the exact setup for a 40-year annuity. Um, decrease 40-year decreasing annuity. With uh, at least for the the first one. So for the first uh annuity, it's going to be forty. D S. So we're looking for the um, accumulate value. Interest we're given is uh four percent right here. So remember, the three percent is only useful insofar as it tells us what is deposited at the end of each year into the second account. Otherwise, it has no role in the accumulate value uh, for this problem. And then we have the four hundred, just plain vanilla annuity, immediate four hundred at the end of each year, forty years, point oh four. All right, so remember the formula here. You don't have to remember it. Just go to the PowerPoint. Uh, so it's 40, 1.04 to 40 minus S, 40.04 to 
over 0.04, uh, not 40, it's 12. I don't know why I put 40 here. Like that. What goes in front is always your first or kind of your last payment here where it's you know, N times whatever, 39 times whatever, then two times whatever, one times whatever. So here that whatever is obviously 12. It's 12, not 40. Sorry about that. Um, well, if I remember this here, it's just... 1.0440 minus 1 over 1.04. No double dots. I'm oh, sorry. Over 0.04. All right. So you get uh, 29.10459 plus 38.010. To one, um, and I don't have it written here, but yeah, these are your two answers. So you just add these two up, and you get your accumulated value. All right, last but not least, a uh, similar kind of problem. And yeah, if you get write me a table of like how much is accumulated at the end of each year. I'm going to give you very little credit because that's not the point here. Uh, again, unless you're really doing PowerPoints, there's no way you're going to show me your work. Uh, like if I, if I really want to be silly, I could make this instead of 34, I could have made instead of 35, I could have made 350 or something. And without PowerPoint, you're not doing that by hand, even doing this 35 times by hand same but uh, anyway um yeah. i just want to reiterate i have nothing against powerpoint uh, powerpoint um excel i said powerpoint uh earlier uh, i have nothing against excel i'm sure excel has formulas to deal with these situations because well this is a practical financial situation but this is not a course on excel so uh, anyway, so Megan invests 2000 at the end of each year. She reinvests the interest at the end of each year into a second account that will earn her 7%. Okay. How much is in your second account after 35 years? Again, I don't want the accumulated value at the end of each year. I want the amount deposited into the second account. So I do want the total amount in the first account, which is very easy. So at the end of each year, she deposits two thousand. So implicitly, there's nothing initially in the account. Um, just like with every other problem we've ever done in this whole course. So at the end of each year, uh, two thousand. Then there's four thousand. Six thousand. Uh, sixty-eight thousand. And then finally, uh, 70,000. 34 times 2,000 is 68,000. 35 times 2,000 is 70,000. So she takes the interest and puts it in the second account, but otherwise, you just keep investing 2,000. All right, so there's nothing in the account in the first year, so nothing gets deposited into this in the and in, in, in the at the end of the first year there's only at the end of the second year does any interest accrue so it's two thousand times three percent interest of the first account that's sixty four thousand bigger draw this better So it's 4,000 times 0.03 is going to be uh, 120. Obviously, that is uh, 2 times 60. 
So take the prior year, 66,000. Okay. Times 0.03. Again, the prior amount earns 3% interest. Uh, so at the end of the 34th year, you have 66,000 times 0.03. That is 1980. You can check that is going to be 33 times uh, 60. And then 68,000 earns one year of interest at 3%. 2040, which is 34, 60. So we have a 34 year uh, increasing annuity uh, immediate. Okay, uh, you know. These deposits are at the end of each year. Okay. So we're starting uh, the payment, uh, the deposit periods, payment periods at the second, in the second year. So we're not really considering this year here. Starting second year. So, uh, yeah, this is just 60 IS. Deposits are at the end of each year. 34.07. Oh, uh, the uh, interest uh, for the second account is 7%. Effective annual interest rate is 7%. So plop this into your formula. 60... Uh, so it's S double dot thirty four point oh seven minus thirty four over point oh seven, and you get eighty eight four eight eight seventy five cents. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. So. That's how to do that. Uh, any further questions, just you know, let me know. Email me and I'll be happy to help you. And good luck with the exam. And uh, yeah, uh, almost uh, almost done. Two more weeks. Crazy how fast this goes. But uh, yeah, two more weeks and then uh, we're done. That's so long. Take care. Bye-bye.